Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Well, I got a viewer letter today about 540 and 1,000 RPM PTO. And I'm going to answer that um, and take some of the mystery out of the differences. Uh, if you're a weekend farmer like I am, you'll probably never deal with 1,000 RPM PTO. But if you ever have a 20-foot bush hog in your future or uh, you want to bale hay with a 5 by 6 baler or a big square baler, you need to know about 1,000 RPM PTO. So let's talk about that today and get to the viewer letter. The letter comes from Chip, and Chip says, Tractor Mike, I'm somewhat new to tractors. I've been shopping for around a 70 to 80 horsepower tractor with a cab because I want to run a larger batwing cutter someday. The dealer is strongly urging me to get a 540 and 1,000 RPM tractor. I know what 540 is. Why is there 1,000 and how is it different? No one that I ask seems to have a logical explanation. Do I need 1,000 RPM PTO or power takeoff? Is it the same as economy PTO? Well, Chip, no, it's not the same. And it's kind of similar. And we'll talk about 540 and 1,000. We'll talk about economy and a little bit about history. So the first power takeoffs solved a massive problem. You had a power unit, a tractor, with a... PTO shaft coming out of it, that little stub shaft on the back, and an implement, and you needed to get power from here to here. And you needed to go up and down, you needed to go side by side because the implement was pulled on wheels, and when you turned, it would the power had to go from this angle to this angle, and it would telescope inside and out because when you went into a draw, the power takeoff, the shaft had to go in and out. So in 1918, International Harvester was a company that came up with the PTO design that we're using today. And the early PTO shafts were inch and an eighth in diameter and six splines. And shortly after the first PTO shaft tractors came out, they went to inch and three eighths shaft with six splines. And that's what we have today. Uh, if you've got a small tractor, both my tractors that I own have that little six spline inch and three eighths shaft that we've had clear back into the 50s. And so that, that's the shaft we have today. But there was a problem. The tractors were getting bigger and the torque requirements were growing. And so in 1958, uh, a design, and I'm not sure who came out with the 1,000 RPM PTO shaft, but it was adopted as an alternative to the 540 shaft. And the problem was when you get up 90 to 100 horse, you're producing enough torque with that 540 six blind shaft that you can twist them off. And so PTO shafts were failing and it was an expensive fix. So in 1958, a new standard was adopted where a tractor could have still inch and three eighths, but a 21 spline PTO shaft that ran at 1000 RPM. So what's the advantage of a 1,000 RPM PTO? Well, the 21 spline shaft can carry more torque. You can have a bigger tractor. Because you're spinning almost twice as fast, you actually can carry the same horsepower with half of the torque, or right around that. So you get a more efficient design. So the bigger implements, the big 20-foot brush hogs, big square balers, big round balers, almost all of them are 1,000 RPM PTO. Now. Is the implement running faster? No, they have a different gearbox that gears it back down. But getting the power from the tractor to the implement is more efficient with 1,000 RPM PTO. And it's too bad the whole industry couldn't have gone to 1,000 RPM PTO back when it came out in 1958. But at that time, there were thousands of 540 RPM implements that would have had to have been modified for that to happen. So that's why it didn't happen. Today, that inch and three eighths 21 spline design is still out there. When you get up to around 70 horsepower, as Chip's mentioning, you have an option on many tractors of getting 540 RPM, which comes standard on all the smaller tractors, and 1,000. And most of the manufacturers have it as an option until you get up 80, 90 horsepower, and then you, you get both. So how do you get from 540 to 1,000 RPM? Well, the earliest International tractors had both shafts out the back. You had a 1,000 RPM PTO shaft and a 540 PTO shaft, and you could mix and match the implements hooked to the tractor. 
Farmers loved it, but the problem with that, it was expensive to build, and I think both shafts were spinning all the time the PTO was engaged, so if you lost your cover that covered up the top shaft or bottom shaft, you had two extra places to get tangled in a PTO, and that's a big danger of tractors is PTO entanglement. So that design went away. John Deere, early John Deere's, had a shaft sticking out the side, and that was actually a carrying place for the shaft. So if you see an older John Deere tractor, and it's got the stub shaft on PTO, and then it's got another shaft sticking out the side, you're like, why is this shaft going this way and the tractor's going this way? Well, that's because that's a storage area for that extra shaft. And to get the, from one shaft to the other, you pulled a snap ring out of the 540 and pulled it out, and you had to have the tractor parked down the hill because there's oil in that sump. And still today, a lot of tractors have oil in that sump, so you have to park a tractor on a slope in order to change from 540 to 1000. But you take a snap ring out, pull that stub shaft off, get the snap ring off the shaft that's in the carrying uh, compartment because it's held in there so you don't lose it that way. And so you take your 1000 out, put your 540 back in, put your 1000 in your, in your tractor, and the gears encounter a different place with the 1000 shaft versus the 540 shaft. And so you've got two different sets of gears in there running at different speeds, so you can go from 540 to 1000. But that's the way the early John Deere's were. And so you could shift from 540 to 1000 with a little stub shaft. Now, I've seen tractors, and I actually sold tractors, that had a, a bolt-on shaft that would bolt on the back. In other words, you had a little stub shaft, and you'd take some nuts off, pull your 540 shaft off, put your 1000 shaft on, bolt it, put the nuts back on and, and tighten it down, and you had a shifter somewhere on the tractor to shift from 540 to 1000. Now, that's a dangerous design because you could easily forget to shift the shifter. And I'm going to tell you, if you're uh, running a 540 attachment at 1000 RPM, bad things can happen. Uh, your, your cutter, like if you're running a bush hog, is probably going to cut really good because blade tip speed's like 30,000 feet per minute. But when it comes apart, there's going to be a debris field over several counties and, and several possible fatalities. So it's really dangerous. Don't do that. But some sh tractors had that short shaft and a shift from 540 to 1000. The bulk of the tractors today have a reversible shaft. And what you do is take a snap ring out of the back. And there's lots of YouTube videos showing this. But you take a snap ring out, take a shaft out. If it's 540 on this end, turn it around, it's 1,000 on the other side, put it back in. The, the gears that drive the shaft encounter a different set of gears inside the tractor, put your snap ring back in, and you've gone from 540 to 1,000. And that's the most common design today. Now, sometimes that sump in the back will be dry. It doesn't matter if it's level or uphill or downhill. But a lot of tractors, you have to park downhill because there will be a fairly significant amount of oil come out when you're changing from 540 to 1000. Now, one other thing that you need to know if you ever go from 540 to 1000, if you're pulling the attachment in the back, the implement in the back, there's a different relationship from the tip of the PTO shaft to the drawbar hole. On 540, your distance from the tip of the PTO shaft to the drawbar hole, the center of the drawbar hole, should be 14 inches. On 1000 RPM, that distance is 16 inches. So your draw bar will have a hole for 540 and a hole for 1000. So if you're shifting from one to the other, you've got to change that as well. So now let's talk about economy PTO. Economy PTO is a great invention. It's like an overdrive for PTO. It's kind of like going from 540 to 1000, but it's not as abrupt. Most of the time, your, your uh, economy PTO is something you can use when you're not needing a horsepower and you need the speed, but you want to throttle down your tractor. So let's say, for example, I'm running a bush hog in the summer when the thick, lush grass is gone, and I'm just cutting, you know, seed heads, and it's not, it's not thick. I don't need horsepower, but I need RPMs. So I put in my economy PTO. I overdrive my PTO by 20% or whatever that number is on that tractor, and then I run across the field. I can throttle down to an economy level and, and still run my cutter and get the revolutions per minute that the blades need. Now, I don't want to do that when I need full horsepower, but it's a nice invention to save fuel and, and wear and tear on you because you're running at a lower RPM, 
uh, when you're not needing a horsepower. So that's what economy PTO is. Now I'm going to mention there's two sizes of 1000 RPM PTO and you probably don't need to know this but I'm going to mention it in passing. The gigantic articulated tractors and the 200, 300 horsepower uh, uh, wheel tractors have a different size PTO because of the torque load they carry. It's inch and three quarters, 20 spline versus the 1000 RPM that's on other tractors under that that's inch and three eighths, 21 spline. So there's actually 2000 RPM PTO designs and it largely referred to as the big thousand and the little thousand. So now you know that. All right, let's get to Chip's question. First off, how do you tell if a tractor you're buying has 540 and 1,000 RPM PTO? Well, if you look at the back and there's a PTO stub shaft coming out and there's no snap ring around it, most of the time that tractor is 540 only. In 99% of the situations, maybe all of them, you can't add 1,000 RPM PTO to that tractor without major, major modification. So if it's 540 only, it's 540 only. Now, a lot of farmers will have two tractors. They may have one that's 540 only and does all their small implements and a bigger tractor that's 540 and 1,000 and they'll just leave the 1,000 RPM PTO shaft in there and run their bigger implements with that and then they're not changing PTO shafts all the time. If, if I were farming, I, I would want a backup tractor. I would want both tractors to be 540 and 1,000 so one tractor goes down, I can run all my stuff with the other tractor. Now, I think that's, some farmers are like that too. But for Chip, I would recommend 1,000 RPM, 540 and 1,000 RPM tractors. If number one, you might buy used implements. Sometimes you can get a deal on a 1,000 RPM cutter because no one has a 1,000 RPM tractor to pull it. In my area, across the Midwest, in non-farming country, most of the tractors don't have 1,000 RPM PTO. In fact, I had to look at two different dealer lots before I found a tractor with 1,000 RPM to show a picture of one because the tractors around here are mostly 540 only. And so if there were a 1,000 RPM 20-foot cutter like new and I had 540 or 1,000, I might get a deal on that. Number two, if you're wanting to use the biggest stuff, like most of your 20-foot cutters, of 5 by 6 round balers and all big square balers, you have to have 1,000 RPM PTO to pull those. So if you're ever going to go to the big stuff, get, get your 1,000 RPM on your tractor. And finally, just for resale value and peace of mind, uh, might be better to get the 1,000 and 540 PTO. So Chip, to answer your question, your salesperson is shooting straight with you. If it were me, I'd go ahead and get the 1,000 RPM. I think if you ever sell the tractor, uh, you'll get a good part of that back on resale value. Appreciate you watching my videos. I'd like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking the mic face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with unique items for sale that help support my channel. And here's a couple other videos you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.